All right, there you have it, a news conference, feisty news conference with the uh, bus drivers union talking about why they are going on what they call a work stoppage. The county calls a strike for 72 hours. They're concerned about part-time drivers uh, moving in and taking some of their jobs. Yeah, they say that they had no intentions to go on strike. That was not what they wanted to do. They just want to make their point heard. They don't think there have been any changes since the original deal, and they're apparently not trusting the company or the county. Now we're going to go back live to Todd Hicks, who was at that news conference. And Todd, it did get pretty feisty for a while there. Uh, well, Charles and Carol, that would be an understatement. You can kind of hear uh, out to the corner of me here uh, some people that are very upset about this uh, so-called work stoppage. Now, uh, President James Macon coming out just a, a few minutes ago. Uh, he's the president of ATU Local 998. Uh, he said that they will go on a work stoppage beginning at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. They will return to work uh, Three days later, uh, of course, this is no doubt time to kind of intersect with Summerfest. A lot of people uh, taking the bus to and from Summerfest, but uh, a lot of uh, angry people showing up here at this news conference to kind of confront the union. Uh, the union says that they were not offered enough money and as well as, far, as well as working conditions and pension. A lot of different sides going back and forth claiming different things, but of course, that's something that we will find out later. Once again, the strike and work stoppage, of course, the union not calling it quite a strike calling it a work stoppage instead forgive me there uh will begin at 3 a.m on wednesday uh, todd we hear the the screaming in the background of you i just want to ask you a quick question do you have any idea are these just uh, separate citizens or is this a group there because i know there's a lot of disabled people a lot of elderly people a lot of people who say they depend on the bus for their livelihood do you know if there's an organized effort there at this press conference well, from the looks of it, that's exactly who showed up to this press conference. It was people who uh, uh, were very angry about the work stoppage. They uh, confronted James Macon and said, you know, what about the elderly people? What about the people who uh, rely on transit for uh, public transit to work and school and the grocery store, what have you? Uh, and uh, the president really didn't have a good response to that. He just said that he, they were going on a work stoppage beginning at 3 a.m. That will last for three days later. But as of right now, it's really unknown what these people will do. Of course, Summerfest, a busy time for uh, bus riders going to and from uh, the Summerfest grounds. But the people that take this bus every day are really the ones that are concerned and no doubt uh, a lot of tensions here down on North 26th Street. We're live at 26th and Wisconsin. Todd Hicks, today's CMJ4. Todd, are you able to show us some of the folks down there? Are they still there? I know that it looks like the union folks went back into their uh, building there, but is the tension still there? Is the public still there as well? Well, a couple of people, there were a few people that kind of showed up and were very angry. There was a man over to my to my right that kind of interrupted the press conference initially. Then two more people showing up uh, to my left uh, and uh, kind of confronting the president. Uh, they did stick around and have talked to the media, so you'll definitely want to stick around. You'll hear from them coming up on later tonight. But uh, it seems as of right now that the people that were initially angry about this work stoppage, and they claim to be both elderly and uh, handicapped. It looks like they have uh, left for now. Yeah, very difficult for people who actually depend on the bus. Okay, thank you very much, 150,000 people ride the bus every day. Katie Crow there just finished speaking with the Milwaukee County Transit System. And she's live with that part of our breaking news coverage. And a lot of people are very concerned about these 300 part-time workers that may have been hired by the transit system. Katie. That's right, Carol and Charles. I just got, got done talking to Brendan Conway. He's the spokesperson for MCTS. He's very frustrated. He said they tried to negotiate, but the union just, he felt, was not being honest. Hear from him right now. The union president has been saying repeatedly over the last week when he didn't want people to realize that their average drivers make $62,000 a year with overtime, this isn't about the money. They said repeatedly, you know, he came and he, he kind of approached the county executive at public event and said, this isn't about the money. And yet today, when we asked him for a contract proposal, it turned out it was about the money. And Conway also saying some facts to me. Uh, he said that they offer MCTS offered the bus drivers a 7.6% raise over two years, which they declined. They want $8 million more in raises over the next two years. They also said they wanted a better health care deal and had concerns about pensions and part-time employees. Now, MCTS says they've had tried to have 10 meetings. So far, they've had 10 meetings with the union. Still no agreement. They said this strike to them came 
came out of left field. They're hoping they can reach an agreement. But for now, there are going to be no bus or there's going to be no transit service starting at 3 a.m., although there will be service tonight to and from Summerfest and all other bus service through tonight starting at 3 a.m., that's not going to continue. Reporting live, Katie Crowther, today's TMJ4. And the fact that this is a finite time, three days work stoppage, there might be some optimism there that perhaps an agreement can be reached because they didn't go on a full-fledged strike. Katie, thank you very much. Well, the county executive, Chris Abley, says the county tried to avoid the strike. Their uh, health and pension benefits are well in excess of a lot of the other thousands of other county employees. And those employees matter too. It's tricky at the county because, you know, we've got sort of a zero sum situation. We've only got so much to work with and I can't just open some magic box of cash. Now, Abley says the county has worked hard not to cut the routes or raise fares. He also pointed out transit funding from the state is less than it was four years ago. Now, we want to go back to the news conference because the union president has come back out. He's in front of the media again. Let's listen in. But take this from this good arbitration. Let a family mediator decide what's going to happen. But you're too scared to do it. Uh, to and Charles and Carol, right now, uh, it, the president coming back out just a few minutes ago uh, and kind of... Uh, Kind of confronting the press once again, saying that the information that we have received and that the county is putting out, Brendan Conway, who is with MCTS, uh, are all lies. He right now, James Macon, is kind of going over some of the details that he, that he claims are incorrect. And of course, he is calling for, he says, if the deal is so good that they should uh, just go to uh, arbitration. But uh, once again, James Macon coming back out, kind of confronting the press and claiming that what the county has said is not true. Of course, the uh, the drama is continuing to fold here on North 26th Street. Todd, it appeared that uh, James uh, got a little unrattled when people start, when the residents started to shout about the lack of their services. And I think that's one reason why he decided he wanted to come back out and address the situation. Well, apparently Todd uh, cannot hear us, and, and, and we unfortunately did not have uh, audio at that particular part of the press conference, but we do have uh, double crews on the scene, so we'll bring that to you. Tonight. Obviously, frustration from the union's point of view on what they thought was going to happen in arbitration, what they think should have happened, but at this point, we now know that there's going to be a work stoppage. I see Todd Hicks in front of the camera right now. Any update again, Todd, on what the union president was just saying? Yeah, well, Charles and Carol, the union president, coming back out just a couple of minutes ago. This initially started out as kind of an announcement uh, that they were going to go on a strike, but then it kind of transformed into what they call a work stoppage. They'll be going out at 3 a.m. and returning three days later. Uh, during this press conference, it got a little bit crazy. There were several hecklers uh, talking to the president, uh, shouting him down, saying that this is not fair to people who are elderly or handicapped, and words got very heated there for a minute. Uh, it kind of all di died down from there, but afterwards, uh, James Macon, who is the ATU local 998 president, coming back out again, confronting the press and saying the information that the county has put out is just flat out lies. And he said, if this information is correct from the county, then he calls on them to take this to a federal media mediator and go to arbitration. But of course, right now, that is not the case. As of right now, they will be going on strike tomorrow at 3 a.m. We're live at North 26th Street, Todd Hicks, today's CMJ4. Yeah, and James telling the hecklers to blame the county county, not the bus drivers. Todd, thank you very much. A lot of tension right now mm -hmm. as we continue to follow this developing story. We're going to be right back after the break. Stick around.